Good morning, everybody. Really warm welcome to St. Martin's Morning Worship today. Um, it's wonderful that you could join us. Um, everything you need for the liturgy today will be on the website. Um, it's the morning worship booklet um, that we've used previously. Um, really blessed to be joined by Imogen again today. He'll be leading us in our worship songs. I hope wherever you are and whatever week you've had, that you are ready to join together in spirit, um, although not in body yet. Um, with all those around the world who are worshipping our Lord and Saviour today um, and all those from St Martin's who will be worshipping um, together as well. So we begin our service with the greeting. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. So I hand over to Imogen now for our first worship song. <laughs> As we gather together um, in the spirit of Christ, wherever we are and whoever we're with, um, we ask his spirit to rest upon us, to bring us his peace, his light, his joy, all the gifts and all the fruit that he brings and bears within us. And as we do so, we lift to him all that we are, all that we've done, all that we've left undone, all the things that we're hoping and planning, we lift it all to our Lord God now, seeking his forgiveness where we need it and asking him to come again into our hearts. Christ, the light of the world, has come to dispel the darkness of our hearts. In his light, let us examine ourselves and confess our sins, praying together. Lord God, we have sinned against you we have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore to us the joy of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Father of all mercies cleanse you from your sins and restore you 
in his image to the praise and glory of his name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We have a time of praise now where we remember that we join with all creation in praising our God. Let everything be said and done in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God through Jesus Christ. Sing psalms, hymns and sacred songs. Let us sing to God with thankful hearts. Open our lips, Lord, and we shall praise your name. We're going to sing together again now, um, so I hand over to Imogen. Our special prayer, the collect for the first Sunday after Trinity. God of truth, help us to keep your law of love and to walk in ways of wisdom that we may find true life in Jesus Christ, your Son. Amen. 
Our first reading this week is taken from the letter of Paul to the Romans, chapter 5, verses 1 to 8. So Romans, chapter 5, beginning to read at verse 1. Romans 5. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. And we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we also rejoice in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance, character, and character, hope. And hope does not disappoint us because God has poured out his love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit whom he has given us. You see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous man, though for a good man someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading is taken from Matthew's Gospel. Matthew chapter 9, beginning to read at verse 35. Matthew chapter 9, beginning to read at verse 5. And we're going right through to chapter 10, finishing at verse 8. Matthew chapter 9, beginning at verse 35. Jesus went through all the towns and villages, teaching in the, their synagogues, preaching the good news of the kingdom and healing every disease and sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest therefore to send out workers into his harvest field. He called his 12 disciples to him and gave them authority to drive out evil spirits and to heal every disease and sickness. These are the names of the 12 apostles. First, Simon, who is called Peter, and his brother Andrew. James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. Philip, and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew the tax collector, James son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus, Simon the zealot and Judas Iscariot who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Do not go among the Gentiles or enter any town of the Samaritans Go rather to the lost sheep of Israel. As you go, preach this message. The kingdom of heaven is near. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse those who have leprosy, drive out demons. Freely you have received, freely give. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's pray now together. Heavenly Father, as we meditate on your word and your call on our lives, refresh us, renew us and reinvigorate us for your mission. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. It feels like we're moving now from a time of stay still, stay where you are, stay safe, into tentatively, very, very slowly, into a period of time where actually we need to start to get ready. We're moving from stay where you are, hunker in, batten down the hatches, to a time of, okay, now we need to begin to get ready. And our gospel reading is poignant for this moment. 
Jesus tells us that the harvest is plentiful, but that the workers are few. In that passage, he tells us that we, his disciples, are those workers and that our job is to be sent out into God's harvest. Our job is to gather in what God has already grown. So we're not the farmer, we're not the one who sows the seed, we're not the one who has to tend to it while it's growing, but rather we are the workers who have to gather in what has already been grown. The harvest is ready and it's plentiful. And of course, what he means there is the people, the people that he has been bringing to faith, the people that he has at this very moment been working in their hearts and their minds and their lives to transform into kingdom people. I believe that people are searching right now, maybe more than ever before, that they're searching for God. And I've heard so many stories of people who in isolation or in moments of uncertainty or just in the confusion of life currently, that they are reaching out and searching and asking questions of who God is and what his kingdom looks like. So I think the first thing we need to do to get ready is to ask ourselves, what sort of community are we inviting people to be a part of? What sort of community are we working in and for and towards? Because right now, we have a unique opportunity to do some pruning of our own. Here at St. Martin's, here in the Church of England, the church around the world, we have a unique opportunity to reassess. What do we need to cherish and hold on to? What have you missed the most that you're very excited to come back to? What helps us flourish and truly grow as members of God's kingdom? What do we do well and right that we need to hold on to? And what about us needs to change? What about us is no longer useful, no longer helpful for God's kingdom here and the growth of each member of it? What needs to change? Just like those 12 apostles, those 12 disciples of Jesus's in Matthew's gospel, he has given us his authority too. We have it, each of us, each of us at St. Martin's and each member of Christ Church throughout the world has been given his authority, the authority of Jesus, the King. So my question is, what are we going to do with it? What are we going to do with this authority that we have been given? That gospel passage ends with Jesus saying, as freely as we have been given, we must freely give to others. As freely as we have been given, we must freely give to others. Let's just spend a minute now thinking, what have you been freely given by God? What word jumps up into your mind? What image? What have you been freely given by the Lord Jesus? Life? Forgiveness, generousness, compassion, love, empathy, a loving heart always ready to listen, blessings new every morning, a deep and true and lasting joy. What has God given to you freely this morning? Jesus tells us we're not to hold on to these things. We're not to hoard them away for ourselves, but we're to freely give them as much as we can, as much as we have. We're freely to give it away. This morning, I think our challenge for here at St. Martin's and further afield is to have faith that the harvest truly is plentiful to have faith that we are only just beginning our work, that it's time now to get ready to be those workers. And we need to have faith that we have everything that we need 
to see many come to Jesus, to see many come to know him as Lord. We have everything that we need. So this week, be that worker in his field and be ready to be part of his growing kingdom. Amen. We're going to say together the words of the creed now to pray together and encourage each other in our faith. We say together, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. We join together now in a time of intercessory prayer. So wherever you are, please do, if you'd like, close your eyes, bow your heads, however you're comfortable, let's pray to our God together for each other and for ourselves. Almighty God, we ask that you guide your church today, especially when differences amongst us seem to threaten our very existence. We face each other but often do not see the face. We too easily make another of one another. Help us now to look again, to see Jesus in each other's faces and to recognise our hopes, our aspirations and desires. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creator God, we are part of the tensions and injustices of the world. Heal the resentment between people and intervene in the world's conflicts. Help us to walk humbly with you at our side and when we come to the crossroads and have to choose which way to go, lead us down the path of justice and righteousness while steering us away from the road that leads to selfishness and sin. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, help us to be gentle with others and with ourselves. Give us, we pray, the calm that makes for consideration and the respect for others that makes us courteous. Take from us hard words and the cynical look. Let us be to others as we would wish them to be to us. And when we fail, forgive us and when they fail, heal us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Caring God, we pray for all those who are afflicted by physical, emotional or mental illness, especially the problems caused by the ongoing corona pandemic. Help them to keep their eyes fixed on you and give them the courage to face the trials and temptations that may come. Especially we pray today for those on our prayer list, on the back of our newsletter. And we pray for those known to us. Please do in a moment of stillness, name them out loud and lift them to our God together now. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God, your love reaches beyond the grave. At the end of our days on earth, be with us and with, if, with those we love and with those whom we love and have gone before us. We pray now for those who have recently died, both of corona and from other causes, and for those bereaved by their passing. Particularly, we pray for the family and friends of Brenda Moore, Marion George, 
and David Sansom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, we thank you for hearing our prayers. And as we move into the coming week, help us to remember our Saviour's words as he sent his disciples out into the world. As you go, proclaim the good news, the kingdom of heaven has come near. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. We join together all our words of liturgy, of prayer and of praise in the words of the Lord's Prayer. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. I hand over to Imogen now again for our final song together.
Thank you so much for joining me today. It's been wonderful to worship with you um, in spirit and in truth, joined with all the saints from both around the world and those in heaven with Jesus. Um, please do join me again next Sunday. Next Sunday is, of course, Father's Day. So we'll be thinking a bit about how God is our Father and celebrating all that fathers do for us in our lives. We finish with the blessing. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you and all those whom you love, now and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. <laughs>